Since World War II, the United States Navy had recognized the importance of maintaining a superior air defense capability. For the first time in history, control of the seas had become dependent upon control of the air. The Navy acted in the early 1950s by developing a missile system which utilized the now standard 13 and 1 half inch airframe. This was Terrier. On 16 May 1952, two Terriers proved the validity of the Navy's new missile development program by intercepting F-6F Hellcat aircraft over the Naval Ordnance Test Station at China Lake, California. The original Terrier deployed in the fleet was a boosted wing-controlled beam riding missile which could successfully engage any known threat of that era. As potential threats increased in both speed and maneuverability, Navy missiles were improved to keep pace. The Terrier was modified to tail control for increased maneuverability. Next, a shorter version of the same 13 and 1 half inch diameter missile was added to provide air defense for the destroyer class of ships. This one was called Tartar. The Tartar missile employed a new dual thrust rocket motor for propulsion. A semi-active homing guidance system provided more accurate terminal guidance than the previously employed beam riding system. As enemy aircraft sophistication increased, our missile systems evolved to counter the threat. Both Terrier and Tartar missiles were now using semi-active guidance with electronic counter countermeasures. Both against air targets. And to engage surface targets to the radar horizon. In the mid-1960s, the Navy combined the best features of the 13 and 1 half inch diameter Terrier and Tartar missiles into one common standardized missile which was appropriately named Standard Missile. The Standard Missile is produced in two versions. The MR, or medium range, for smaller Tartar ships, and the ER, or extended range version, for the larger Terrier ships. The totally modular design of these two versions provided a high degree of interchangeability resulting in simplified missile system logistics for the fleet. And standard missile brought many refinements and improvements to the weapon system. Using the most advanced state-of-the-art techniques, standard missile was the first all-electric missile and used all solid-state electronic components. The result? Greater reliability, reduced cost, and a high degree of immunity from electronic countermeasures. Standard Missile provides the fleet a large area of protection. The medium range version can engage both incoming and off range targets. The extended range missile provides protection to substantially greater distances. Early in the Vietnam conflict, enemy ground to air missiles took a high toll of Allied aircraft. 
To counter this threat, the United States needed an anti-radiation missile with a far greater standoff range and effectiveness than was currently in the operational inventory. And we needed it fast. The fleet-proven standard missile, with its modular adaptability, provided the answer. This new system was designated Standard Arm and became operational within 12 months of program authorization. Several hundred rounds were fired in combat in Southeast Asia, with a high percentage resulting in target kills or suppression. Standard missile was also deployed in our ships during the Vietnam conflict. On 19 April 1972, three attacks were launched against American ships in the Dong Hoi Gulf. The first two attacks were from MiG aircraft. As each attack came in, CG-31 USS Sterrett, equipped with standard missiles, detected, tracked, and engaged the hostile aircraft. Both MiGs were successfully intercepted and destroyed. The third attack came from a surface-to-surface -surface missile. Again, Sterrett successfully engaged the target, destroying the attacking missile. The outstanding success demonstrated by both standard missile and standard arm in combat provided the basis for the development of several new weapon systems which would incorporate members of the standard missile family. The first new system involved six 1052 class destroyer escorts equipped with the Mark 16 ASROC launcher. Two cells in the launcher were modified to fire standard missiles. Another system was installed on the stern of four Navy patrol gunboats. PG-86 and 87 were equipped with standard missiles, while PG-98 and 100 were given the newly developed surface-to-surface -surface arm version of standard missile known as SSSM arm. In 1975, a special demonstration was conducted on board USS Goldsboro, DDG-20, to evaluate integrating the SSSM arm weapon system into the Tartar DDG combat weapon system. These tests demonstrated successful over-the-horizon detection and engagement, system compatibility, and a highly lethal mission kill capability. To further demonstrate standard missiles flexibility, versatility, and adaptability, it was launched vertically from a surface effect ship traveling at 60 knots. The missile achieved a direct hit on the surface target. To suppress air defense radar systems, standard arm was deployed on trucks using canister launchers. As the potential hostile threat evolved in the late 1970s and early 80s, Standard Missile 2 was developed. Featuring a new type of receiver for terminal guidance and a mid-course command guidance system using shipboard to missile command links. This system affords Standard Missile 2 a more energy efficient trajectory, significantly increasing downrange performance of the MR versions. The Standard Missile II Engineering Flight Test Development Program was successfully concluded on 16 September 1976 with two BQM-34 intercepts on the same day. Enhanced performance included its ability to be launched in a quiet mode and its far superior electronic countermeasures immunity from self-screening jammers prevalent in the 1980s. Following this unqualified success, Standard Missile 2 moved to sea, 
to begin the flight demonstration program aboard USS Wainwright CG-28. The 16-day firing program proved our ability to launch the missile on search radar data and to intercept targets under a variety of range, altitude, speed, and maneuver conditions, as well as in active and passive countermeasure environments. The CGSM-2 ER weapon system was totally operable by an all-Navy crew. The result, four direct hits, one warhead kill, and two tactical kills. In USS Norton Sound, AVM-1, a medium-range SM-2 physically intercepted a target drone, demonstrating compatibility of the SM-2 with the Aegis weapon system. In February 1979, the SM-2 system was declared operational and entered the Navy inventory after achieving nine kills against nine attacks under simulated battle conditions in tests from USS Mahan CG-42. Both the extended range configuration and the medium range Aegis configuration have allowed Standard Missile II to markedly increase the range of current Navy air defense missile systems. Standard Missile II has increased firepower and Standard Missile II provides an outstanding improvement in electronic countermeasure immunity. In March 1982, the stunning potential of Standard Missile with the Aegis combat system and the vertical launching system was dramatically demonstrated. Two BQM-34 drones were launched from the Pacific Missile Test Center against a simulated battle carrier group 10 miles from USS Norton Sound. One drone was launched at short range and low altitude, the other at long range and high altitude. The Aegis system acquired and tracked the drones, then recommended engagement. Within seconds of one another, two standard missiles were vertically launched from Norton Sound. Both targets were destroyed. During at-sea trials on 17 August 1982, two standard missiles fired from USS Ticonderoga, the first Aegis-guided missile cruiser, intercepted their drone targets well within the lethal range of a warhead and were scored tactical kills. The multi-service standard missile family is the most reliable and lowest cost tactical air defense missile available today. 85 U.S. Navy ships and 28 Allied Navy ships are currently armed with standard missile. In the coming decade, the number of ships deployed with standard missile is expected to grow by 50%. The Navy's far-sighted investment in the 13 and 1 half inch diameter airframe has paid off. The U.S. Navy has continued to meet a growing threat over the past 25 years, and to meet it effectively, with the continuing evolution of the standard missile. As future threats appear, standard missile will be ready to meet them.